Welcome to Turning Point 2020. I'm sorry this is being done on Friday, guys. I tried to get it done yesterday, but I had stuff to do, unfortunately. Okay, let's put this in perspective. We already know what the fallout of this show was on this week's Impact. So there's not much I'm going to be adding to it. But I am going to tell you my feelings about what this show represented to me. Disappointment. It did. This was disappointing. With a few nice spots in it, it was still very disappointing. And I'm going to go over as much of the show I feel like that's necessary. But for this Impact Plus show, it was highly disappointing for me. Now one thing that wasn't disappointing was seeing Davari. I was not disappointed in seeing Davari. It was nice seeing Davari. I would have liked if Davari's back with the company. That's if. I haven't checked to see if he is. But if he's back, I would have liked him to go up against a jobber and win. Because I don't like seeing someone who comes into a company who has not been seen there for a while, who's been signed to the company, if he is. Because I don't know if this was a one-off for Davari or not. If he was, why would he have to job to Eddie Edwards? There was no point in it. Whether the match was good or not is irrelevant. It wasn't a bad match. Seeing J Davari being as jacked as he is, being able to nip up was cool. But seeing him lose to Eddie, I don't agree with. Now, we had Tennille Dashwood and the Jordan Grace versus the duo of Taya and Rosemary. I didn't have a problem with Rosemary and Taya winning here. And I didn't have a problem with Tennille Dashwood not wanting to be involved in. She didn't really care. This leads in what's going on, to what's going to happen next week, because we write, at this moment, we know that Jordan Grace is going to get a partner. It could be ODB. That's as far as I know. It could be ODB or someone else, but my guess is ODB. So seeing her lose there was not a surprise. I got to say, at least Rosemary looked a lot better in the ring than she's been looking for a while. So I was all right with that. The match I felt was highly disappointing that didn't even need to be done. Swaggle versus Brian Myers. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not against Swaggle. I'm not against Brian Myers. But here's the thing that gets me. Brian Myers had an opportunity to have a really good storyline with Tommy Dreamer. Tommy brought him into WWE. You can mention them. They're not like WWE that won't mention anybody else. They're willing to mention WWE. No problem. You could have built something around that. And you built nothing. It was a joke with Tommy. And it was a joke with Brian. I don't know why I didn't go there. When they should have gone there. And it would have been a good story. Now we got Swaggle. Who's supposed to be Brian Meyer's friend. And Brian's telling him. Hey lay down for me. Just lay down. And Swaggle refuses. And we had this match. Which really looked so. Look. I'm not against a midget wrestler. And there's nothing wrong with calling a, calling a little person a midget wrestler. That's what they, would, they have been known as. And I'm not being disrespectful to little people. That is what they're called. It is midget wrestling. Swaggle should have been working with a midget wrestler like himself. Sometimes it's alright to do this with a full grown guy. But when there isn't other midget wrestlers around and there isn't other guys that are full size to do balance, you have a full size wrestler versus a midget wrestler, it can look very choppy, particularly if both of them are not that great. And when it came down to it, the match wasn't bad, but still it didn't look good. And on top of that, I didn't want to see the match anyway because this wasn't about Tommy and Brian Myers. We already know who won. I don't even need to go any further. XXXL versus now called Beer Gun. Because you got them in my face. I believe I got a shot of them. When it comes to Shelly, he's out. I don't know if he's injured or he didn't resign with Impact or whatever. He's not there. Now, it looks like that James Storm is there, which I am ecstatically happy to see. And seeing this match made me happy. This is one of the bright spots here because when you look at this match, all four of them did pretty well together. Look, seeing AC Romero do a, a, a drop kick the way he did, 
against against <laughs> Saban. It, it you may think AC does not have athletic, is not athletic. The guy is thick, but he's athletic, and he is good. Larry D is good. Seeing that James Storm and and well, I'm not saying it was perfectly balanced. But I did enjoy the match. And I wasn't surprised Beer Guns won this. They had to win. The match that was okay was Raju versus Cousin Jake. Now, we already know that Johnny Swinger had the gun in his fanny pack. And that's this Impact that just passed. But they built up to it because of Impact Plus. Because... You got Cody just being angry. You can't believe he lost to a Johnny Swinger. They look for Johnny because he wants to redeem himself. And you look in his fanny pack and they find the golden gun that's in my face. That's what we got. So I wasn't surprised about this match. I kind of wanted to see Swinger there. That would have made it better. But there was no Swinger as far as I saw. And in the end, Raju won. Now, mind you, I'm not taking anything away from... Cousin Jake. But Raju looked really good there. Raju looked really good. And he managed to retain. And this is where we saw the debut or the re-debut of Joe Doring. With an Eric Young. I kind of still feel a little upset because Eric Young is not the world-class maniac now. He's a world-class maniac ref. Well, not ref. Well, a manager can be a ref because he's going to try and control his monster. He's going to try and manage his monster like a ref to tell him what to do, where to go, what needs to be done. So let's see where they're going to go with these two. They could be a tag team, but my guess is he, Eric Young is a, a manager now, which I don't agree with. You had the match that made no sense that I really didn't want to watch. Good Brothers versus the North. Look, guys, I'm not against Ethan Page or Josh Alexander. I still don't know if they're staying with the company or if Ethan Page is going to leave the company. But when it comes down to it, let's be honest here. Why didn't the Good Brothers win at Bound for Glory? Why would you have them win on Impact Plus? They're in my face. It makes no sense to have them win at Impact Plus when they should have won a Bound for Glory. It made no sense for the North to win the titles just to drop them at Impact Plus. Like I said, it was dumb. It is disappointing to see this match because it wasn't a bad match, but the point is it made no sense for them to win here. They should have won weeks before at Bound for Glory. Let's move on. The no DQ match of Dana Perrazzo Versus too young. Now this is after we now know that Kylie Ray is now not wrestling right now because of her depression. We can understand what happened at Bound for Glory because it just they had to put someone there. But to be honest, and this is being honest, it would have been better that Dana Perrazzo <coughs> Dana Perrazzo not job. At Bound for Glory. I'm being honest here. It would have been better that Sue didn't have to face her. They could have done some type of special with Sue. Messing with Dana Perrazzo. Going into Hard to Kill. And then have Sue win the title. Because as it stands, instead of building a new story, they just did a patch job. And it just didn't feel like much. Mind you, this was the second best match of the night, even though it was a DQ match. And in the end... Perazzo does re regain her title, but I do not agree with it. I think they could have built this up going into Hard to Kill and actually have the title match there than here. You guys can tell me below. Now, I could talk about Moose versus Willie Mac, but there's really no need to. Particularly what happened on Impact this past week. When it comes down to it, guys, we have a Moose that is unchained, un. He's now free. And he's going to act any way he wants. He's going to knock out guys. And he's going to prove why he deserves to be recognized as a champ. Now still the question is what are they going to do with the TNA title? 
where they merge it with the Impact title. Because sooner or later, he's going up against Rich. And I'm hoping they'll do something like that. Because they're not going to make the TNA title a mid-card title. Or a lower-card title. Because if they were, they would have done it already. And it just feels like a prop. And I don't like seeing the title like that. That's just me. You guys tell me below. Finally. <sighs> the biggest disappointment. They're in my face. Actually... He's in my face. Rich Swan with the Impact World Heavyweight title. I'm not going to show anything else other than that. This is not about how bad the match was. It was a good match. This is not about Eddie dealing with Ken Shanrock. Because that happened at the end of the match. This was about why didn't they build up Sammy to really go up against Rich properly. Why did they use Ken Shanrock? Why did they even have Ken Shenrock in this situation? Why didn't they just build up the story between Rich Swan, Sammy Callahan, give him a redemption story, and make this mean something now that Rich is healthy? No. They throw something together with Ken and Rich, and Ken and Shenrock. And in the end, this felt like nothing when it should have been something. Rich Swan should have had a great story with Sammy Callahan without Eddie involvement, without Ken Shenrock involvement. It should have been about them. And it, I, I don't care. Because it felt like a waste of time. What was the point of Sammy even challenging him? What was the point? I didn't expect Rich to job here because there's no story. So in the end, this entire thing was disappointing. Yes, there were a few bright spots, but this was a disappointing show. It angered me and pissed me off and it made me feel disappointed. But that's just me. Have a good day. Have a good night. Peace.